into our shoes for a little bit and see how we're trying to do it. What you just had one wrong, one wrong move. I stopped off a couple of accounts before coming to Pueblo. I, I feel for him because I'm yeah. in the same boat. I'd have a job tomorrow and be off the streets inside of two weeks. Checks. I was a little knucklehead gang member, and I changed my life. I, I had, I'm 40 years old, you know, I should have did that back then. I have the misconception that homeless people are all drug addicts, or all just, you know, that want to be successful. I want to, like, I'm 22, there's so many things in life that I haven't experienced. I'm one of those people where, like, I'm trying to make a point, you know, like, where are we going to be at? Like, you know, there's so many other people, you know, like, they're older. I'm younger, like as far as employment, like they're all understaffed. So what is the, what's the main root of the problem? I think it's more of understanding. And I think it's more of looking at the problems and finding a solution and actually wanting to solve them, not create more problems. Why don't you get a job? I, my, my three sons, I lost my wife, I lost my house. I've lost everything. I was, Ended up lettering. I uh, went turn turn a little bit. It was a situation where one wrong step can't screw things up. I wish I wouldn't have took that turn, but if I turned this way or that way, I turned that way instead of this way. Uh, I've I've gained. Nothing. I've gained friends, there's shelter, but uh, there ain't a place, there ain't a place that uh, I would wish on, like I said, my worst enemy. Oklahoma, came up here from Oklahoma, cause I had a line on the $20 an hour trimming job, and well, I stopped off in a couple of other towns before coming to Pueblo, but to try and, but I lost my wallet on the way up here, and I was trying to see if I was getting a replacement ID. It hasn't happened yet, which is why I'm still out here and not in an apartment somewhere with the $20 an hour trimming job. Um, let me see, Washington and Oregon are way too wet. Okay. Um, Washington, D.C. is Washington, D.C. I'm not going to say anything about that. I was close, and I've always wanted to come up here. So. My uh, grandma um, kicked me out, or she moved, and so I was in foster care treatment centers before that, and then I got out because I did think the system was helping me. When my grandma came down here, she I was living with her, and then all of a sudden it didn't work out, so I was back on the streets. But while I was out for good four years I've been fighting my disability just by myself because I don't know any lawyers out here yet. I've been sleeping outside during the summertime sometimes or sleeping with friends just wherever I can crash. I got taken away from my family in 2007, been to foster care, treatment centers, group homes, I was throughout Colorado. Um, I've been trying to get a job but <laughs> My disability, I have PTSD and all that, is coming into effect. My learning disability, I can't learn that much. Um, I was abused, I was hit, especially in foster care, treatment centers, all that. I, I just kept adding on more. I was abused, emotional and physical. Um, I was beaten to, to where I had a bad head injury. So I just stuck down the Pueblo because I'm familiar down here. I know where everything is. I know my doctor's down here. I, I just didn't want to start all over because oh, they're homeless. They don't. They don't know how to do nothing, or they don't want to do nothing. Why don't you get a job? Okay, well, why don't you help us out then? Try to help us get a job. We're we're trying to get a job. We're trying to do everything, but it's kind of hard for us because we don't have a place like you guys. Pretty much homeless. Um, 
this because the property manager where I was renting from didn't want to renew my lease. So it kind of put me in this position. I was homeless for six months, but I had um, Posada who was there for me and paid for a shelter. So it was only when I had my daughter though. So like the week, because I have a 50-50 custody order. So every other weekend we would, they would pay for the motel. My, like my schedule's always full. Like I don't ever try and waste time. Like I always have things I have to do. I always have things that I'm trying to achieve in my life, regardless of what obstacles I have to face. I'm out in this whole entire town, like every single place, I will seriously. I'm Honestly, doing it. like everybody's entitled to their opinion. Everybody has freedom of speech. Everybody, you know, should definitely say how they feel. But as far as a personal matter, like I would only see that as we need to look at that as a positive or a negative. And if it's a negative opinion, then if you feel so strongly about it. Like change it. Thanksgiving week. She said yeah three times, so it was awesome. That's great. She said yes every time. Yeah, all three <laughs> times, and I, I got the same face. <laughs> we we put applications, talk about Burger King, Sonics, uh, doing landscaping. Ruby Tuesdays. Ruby Tuesdays. <laughs> Applebee's. Uh, Applebee's everywhere. My lobster. We'll call you back. Oh, I'm sorry. We hired somebody else. Why? Because it's the it's not because of the nation. It's like because back in the days you got in trouble with felonies and stuff, and they hold it against you. You know, it's not a grudge anymore. Leave it alone. Give us a chance. And there's better people out there to work. When my mother passed away, it was tragic for me. Um, she was my best friend. I talked to her every day. I didn't know what to do. Basically, having a steady income is basically what's holding us up from having housing. If we had something, two, three hundred dollars every month, we, like everybody else, not saying nothing about the alcohol, alcohol and the abuse of drugs. But if I had that kind of money, we'd be safe. I'd be inside of a house kicking and chilling.